Fortnite Season 1 was okay. It remained pretty similar to the preseason and didn't really do much to stand out from it. Speaking of that, I would recommend watching my last video that I did going over the entirety of the preseason, which you kind of need to know to understand this video. But anyway, let's get started. On October 26, 2017, version 1.8 released with Season 1. Cosmetics have now been added to the game. You can now equip an outfit, harvesting tool, glider, and banner, which can be equipped in the new locker tab of the lobby. But to get these, it was going to cost you. V-Bucks were a new currency introduced from Save the World to Battle Royale. These could be used in the new item shop that was added. There you could buy these new cosmetics besides banners. The thing that sucked about it though was that it was pretty expensive for what you were getting. About 100 V-Bucks was equivalent to 1 US dollar. To buy an uncommon recolor of a default skin would cost you 800 V-Bucks or about $8. In addition, they changed the 8 default skins to have similar camo outfits which incentivized the players to spend money on their game. But it is just cosmetics so I can't hate on it too much. During the season, they also introduced a leveling system that went to level 100. To level up, you had to do daily challenges in order to gain XP. But what did this give players in return? Not much. At Season 1's launch, if you reached level 10, you could earn a Battle Bus banner, and at level 25, you could earn the Mako Glider. But, these rewards were only available to players during Season 1. The Season Shop was also being worked on, but wouldn't be released until a later update. A leaderboards tab was added to the lobby, and you can check for who has the most epic victory royales, and other stuff like that. This update added the Fort Nightmares event. There was a cool new Halloween themed lobby background, spooky cosmetics, and a new weapon. Unfortunately, there weren't any map changes, but there is quite a bit to talk about for the loot pool. Items that return include the Assault Rifle, the Assault Rifle Burst, the Assault Rifle Scope, the Pump Shotgun, the Tactical Shotgun, the Submachine Gun, the Tactical Submachine Gun, the Pistol, the Revolver, the Bolt Action Sniper Rifle, the semi-automatic sniper rifle, the grenade launcher, grenades, bandages, medkits, shield potions, the damage trap, the ceiling zapper, the wall dynamo, and the directional jump pad. Um, in my last video I accidentally called the assault rifle scope the assault rifle with scope, but it wasn't called that until a later update, so um, my bad guys. The only item that was vaulted was the rocket launcher. Kind of. For the Fort Nightmare season, it was replaced with the new Pumpkin Launcher. It came in the same rarity and had the same exact stats though, but it shot jackal lanterns and made goofy sounds. An actual new item that came to the game was Slurp Juice that came in an epic rarity. It took 2 seconds to use and healed 1 health and 1 shield over a span of 25 seconds. That meant in total, it healed 25 health and 25 shield. For an epic rarity item, this was pretty bad. It tried to serve the purpose of healing both health and shield, but kind of failed at doing both. It could be useful to use while fighting someone or running from the storm, but it was too weak to be as useful as say a medkit or the shield potion. The damage and reload time were both buffed on the regular SMG, but it still pretty much sucked. The medkit's rarity changed from common to uncommon, and the shield potion's rarity changed from common to rare. The only other substantial thing that was added during this update was that instead of having to annoyingly pick up ammo that is round other loot, now, ammo, materials, and traps are now auto picked up when players are around them. On November 2nd, 2017, version 1.8.1 released, and it only had bug fixes and some quality of life changes, so I'm not going to talk about it. A few days later though, on November 8th, 2017, version 1.8.2 released. The season shop got added to the game. It was a new tab on the lobby and worked as a combination of item shop and battle pass. You would have to reach certain levels to be able to buy the cosmetics. In addition, it was only available for the duration of the season. Putting in the work just to have the ability to buy something sounds like the stupidest idea. This is some EA bullcrap right here. In this early version of the battle pass, 
there are only 4 items. At level 5, you could buy the Aerial Assault 1 Glider for 500 V-Bucks. At level 15, you could buy the Aerial Assault Trooper skin for 1200 V-Bucks. At level 20, you could buy the Wenegade Waiter skin for 1200 V-Bucks. And at level 35, you can buy the Raider's Revenge Harvesting Tool for 1500 V-Bucks. If you wanted to buy all the items in the Season Shop, it would cost you 4400 V-Bucks, or about $44. Thankfully, this awful feature would only last for the duration of this season. An actual good thing that came out of this update was the new bush item. It came in a legendary rarity and took 3 seconds to use. Remember the bush camping strategy that came around during the preseason where you just hide in a bush and camp people out? With this item, you are the bush. You can just run around as a bush and when you crouch, you are completely camouflaged. After you took any damage, the bush would break. The good thing about this is that the bush absorbs that damage besides fall damage, I think. This means that whenever the sniper that is 200 meters away from you sees a green bush sprout legs, you can be completely untouched by the headshot. This item was just so stupid that it was amazing. Other than the bush, the only other change in this update is that the pump's fall off damage range was reduced so you actually had to be up close for it to be effective. On November 14th, 2017, version 1.9 released and it came with a new launch pad. It was a trap and came in an epic rarity. When placed down, players could jump onto it and it would launch them into the air where they can then redeploy their glider. This item was very good for mobility and being able to be placed on builds, you can build up as high as you want to be able to glide much farther. The one downside though was that it severely outclassed the directional jump pad for mobility. A few days later, on November 20th, 2017, a content update arrived bringing the submachine gun suppressed. Epic actually did it. They made an SMG that was viable to use. This SMG did have more damage than the other two SMGs, but had a much slower fire rate. In return though, it was much more accurate. I'm sure you can tell by the name, but it also had a suppressor that made the shooting much quieter than other guns, making it very good for stealth. With the addition of the submachine gun suppressor, the submachine gun got a buff to its damage in magazine, while the tactical submachine gun just got a buff to damage. Lastly, the rocket launcher got a 10% nerf to its reload time. Two days later, on November 29th, 2017, a hotfix occurred which drastically nerfed the assault rifle's damage and changed the headshot multiplier to 2. On November 29th, 2017, version 1.9.4 released bringing in the smoke grenade, which came in a rarity of uncommon. You could throw these like a regular grenade, and after about 5 seconds they would detonate. It would then release a cloud of smoke that halted visibility for about 12 seconds. This item was... pretty bad. There wasn't too many uses it could be used for that would be better than just building a wall, because it didn't just obscure opponent's vision, but also your own. The one thing it was good for was throwing it down to revive a teammate, but that's about it. Overall, not a very useful item. The 
pumpkin launcher was also reverted back to the rocket launcher. Speaking of rocket launchers, during this time, a bug was discovered that allowed players to ride rockets. By timing a jump just right, a rocket could be shot under a player and take it with them. It turns out the community loved this oversight so much that during this patch, it became a permanent feature known as rocket riding. On December 6, 2017, version 1.10 released, and really didn't have too much to talk about. Well, I mean, I guess they did rework the player inventory to make it look better, but I mean, that's, that's really it. Two days later though, on December 8th, 2017, the first limited time mode was created, or LTM for short. It introduced 50v50, a very fun game mode that pit two teams of 50 people against each other, and the best part was, no friendly fire. To all the defaults back in the day who actually revived me, you have my deepest respect. But since it was a limited time mode, it only stayed until December 17th, 2017. The last day of Season 1 was December 14th, 2017. The season lasted for a total of 49 days, and in my opinion, wasn't that great. The addition of cosmetics were great, but the high prices and the awful season shop weren't. My main criticisms of the season was the lackluster items they added, and the season shop which thankfully would get a rework in the next season. Other than that, this season wasn't really anything too special. Okay, bye.